generic in the run game. It, is it, what are some of the issues that maybe hasn't translated to a better pocket and play action for, for Ryan on the passing game? Yeah, I think, you know, there, there's been a number of issues that have come up, you know, whether it's been, uh, you know, scheme that they've had defensively that, you know, has been an effective call into that certain protection, or maybe we've had a, an individual breakdown somewhere technique wise. Um, you know, I, I know there's been a lot uh, discussed about, you know, the protection in, in all phases, but certainly in the play action world, uh, you know, it, it takes a, a sense of urgency getting open on the outside as well. And so, you know, all that I think is kind of factored into, uh, you know, some of that inconsistency. What adjustments did you make along the way to help pass protection in that game? Yeah, we certainly tried to uh, to get to some things that would get the ball out a little bit quicker, you know, that we could get some man-to-man uh, -man beaters and, and try to get some, you know, picks and rubs and, and things of that nature going. Uh, obviously, you guys saw that we went to quite a few screens as well, you know, try to get the ball out in the screen game. Uh, and so, you know, always looking for ways to, to try to be able to help if, if we're having a, a rough go of it. With the sacks against the Jets, how much of that do you think was the scheme and guys – kind of being confused by what they saw versus just, just losing a battle straight up. Yeah, I think it's a case-by-case -case basis. I know Ryan had mentioned this uh, yesterday. You know, you could go into that game and, and dissect the sacks and, and place, you know, some sort of blame on every position group on offense and, and myself, you know. So, uh, you know, I think it's a case-by-case a -case basis when it comes to those pressures and sacks. And, um, you know, certainly they were doing some things uh, – you know, they, they put us in tough spots, uh, but we got to be able to have answers for those. Downfield shots, Todd, I guess, haven't been a lot this year. I guess probably is, is protection one of the big reasons why I guess you probably need a little more time to, to get some of those shots off. You know, we've, we've taken some. We just haven't connected on them. You know, we had one down the field to, uh, to Josh uh, in that game. You know, we had, uh, you know, one that we tried to get down the field, push down the field off a of play action in the third quarter of that game. Obviously, I had a few in Seattle, you know. Um, it, yeah, there's there's lots of different reasons for when and, and where you take your shots. Uh, we certainly want to push the ball down the field uh, when we have the opportunity to. Uh, we just got to start to connect on them, you know. Important to, I guess, obviously balance out the, the run game and open up some space a little bit more for, for Derek. I, you know, uh, as much as it is balanced, it is just, you know, taking advantage of our opportunities. You know, um, we – have the ability to be an explosive play action team. Uh, we got the guys to do it, and uh, you know I think that that's an area that we definitely need to improve. Uh, and like I said, we've we've had some opportunities, we just haven't connected. And uh, you know I, I feel like some of those explosives they start to come in bunches. You know, and coordinators typically sock away plays for overtime that you don't want to show, or when you get to overtime, is it is it more of a challenge to sort of show the defense something they haven't seen yet over the previous 60 minutes? Yeah, staff does a great job of communicating throughout the game, you know, about what, what plays, maybe what wrinkles, uh, based off the looks we've seen on the on the surface and throughout the course of the game, communicating with the players. So there's a little bit of that. And then there's also coming back and trying to give the guys a, a chance to maybe fix what some of the problems on plays earlier in the game were and repeat and plays. So there's a balance in there, you know, uh, and certainly situationally that comes into play too. You know, our first play over time, we end up getting a lost yardage play, so it kind of throws you out of your whack a little bit there. And, um, you know, so that all factors into it. But uh, as a whole, I'd say that there are things you're trying to set up through the course of the game. Some of them you're able to set up, some of them you're not. And then there are also some adjustments that you want to make uh, and give guys a chance to fix some issues. How do you feel the receivers have done with separation, particularly in the Jets game? Uh, you know, I think it was fairly inconsistent in the Jets game, to be honest with you. I think we need to, uh, you know, make market improvement there. I know that I can uh, search for ways to try to help that. Uh, that's my job is to put them in the best situations possible to win against man coverage. Uh, you know, and we got a lot of man uh, last Sunday. So looking forward to them taking a, a step in the right direction uh, when they get the next opportunity versus man. What needs to happen there outside of running away from people? You know, I think there's uh, a lot of things. There's route craft in man-to-man, -man, setting guys up, you know, using your stem, uh, giving them scheme with pattern releases, things, things of that nature. Uh, you know, we just got to have a sense of urgency on the perimeter like those pass rushers have, uh, you know, teeing off uh, on the snap. When it comes to the red zone, I mean, this team has traditionally over the last couple of years been very good, but 50% now, what are some of the things that are happening to kind of – to limit what you guys are able to do. Yeah, we've had a couple self-inflicted wounds. You know, we had a missed hot uh, on the first drive of the game, and then obviously a snap error 
uh, on the second drive of the game, that would have been a you know potential first and goal on the four yard line. Uh, we've been a pretty good uh, goal to go uh, team, uh, you know. But this reminds me of my first year here in Tennessee, where early in the season there was kind of a little bit of ebbs and flows with the red zone, and then once we caught our stride, started making plays, guys started. Uh, you know, craving, uh, you know, those opportunities in the red zone, things kind of took off. And we went on a stretch there where, uh, you know, we had a, a number of conversions in a row. And so that's what it's going to take is guys having a sense of urgency to, to make their plays, do the little things right down there. And I believe it'll start to, uh, you know, snowball in the right direction. Maybe overall performance of receivers and maybe how much would it help to get, maybe get A.J. back if that's the case this week? It certainly, uh, you know, certainly helps when you get, you know, playmakers, uh, you know, available for you. I, I think it's just been inconsistent overall in the wide receiver room. Don't think it's fair to sit here and give you a letter grade. Um, I think it's, you know, more of an individual basis. Uh, but certainly, we're, we've got to chase some more consistency, not just there, but uh, across the board. What are you still like seeing from Dylan Radens in practice, and, and, and what is he working on, and where does he maybe still need to grow? Yeah, he's he is working really hard. You know, working really hard at his craft. Uh, you know, he's been you know picking the brain of the veterans. You know, trying to learn and absorb as much as he can. He's got a great attitude. Uh, he's hungry to learn. You know, he's uh, looking forward to continue to work with him. Could he be part of the answer as you look for solutions for pass protection? You know, I think we're we're evaluating uh, everything. You know, and and right now, you know, as I said, I think it's unfair to to place. Blame more blame in one area than another. We got a lot of people that have to step up and do a better job, myself included. How many, uh, maybe two point plays or goal line plays you used to have in each week? Just curious, you, you ran the one to Cam, you had the two point one that was successful. How many you usually take into a game uh, that you have at your disposal? Yeah, sometimes you carry those low red plays, you know, like the one to Cam. That wasn't a two point play, that was in our low red zone package. Um, but Sometimes you can bleed those down into the two point. All kind of depends on, you know, what the defense has shown as a two point defense. Uh, as a whole, you'd like to carry a few of them so that you can, you know, get to different answers uh, depending on what they've been doing throughout the game. But uh, oftentimes that's a, you know, a fine or a, a little bit of a blurred line between low red zone and, and two point places. Screens to Jeremy and even some to Derek have really worked for you guys this year. What, what, what's been behind that, and is that something that's been emphasized in practice to get that to work? Uh, we certainly have put a commitment into trying to improve our timing and our spacing in the screen game. That, that was something that started this off season, um, you know, in in uh, April and May. But I, I think it's all complementary, right? We got a lot of drop back pass, got a lot of chips, we got a lot of you know things of that nature going on, and and so having some counter punches off of that uh, is important. And as I mentioned earlier, you know that that to me is a way to to help when they're teeing off a little bit in pass rush. Um, you know that's a, that's a compliment to be able to try to slow down those ends a little bit or slow down the hug rushers and things of that nature. As you put the game plan together, you know, in the week building up. Obviously, Derek is a big part of the offense, but I mean, I would imagine you want to try not to use him too much. Like, how do you go through? Like, okay, we have to make sure that we don't give him 50 touches this week, even if we have to. Like, how do you go through that? Yeah, it's a uh, you know, it's a process of, of building how you want to attack the defense, right? And then on Sunday when it starts to unfold, um, you know, you, you kind of have to go with the adjustments and and maybe the hot hand. You know what I mean? And and I think in New York, you saw we were going to give him an opportunity to, to find his stride, you know, and certainly didn't want to uh, abandon the run game uh, at any point. You know, that's something we're going to lean on around here. And, uh, you know, I think Derek's one of those backs that he gets better and better as the game goes on. Do you frequently find yourself in game saying, hey, you know what, we only wanted to get like 30 touches this week, but man, he's hot, so we got to keep going. Like, do you find yourself giving him the ball more on game day than you had planned throughout the week? Uh, I wouldn't say that I put a number on it throughout the week. You know, I think it, I think you just try to build a, a process and things that you want to be able to um, complement and get to, whether it's play pass or, you know, something with Jeremy in there or, or what have you. Um, and and I, I have yet to have somebody tell me on the headset, hey, he's got too many carries. So, um, you know, I mentioned this before, but, you know, Derek is a, a heck of a player and a great asset for this offense. And if the best way to help this team win is to give him the rock as many times as we can, that's what we got to do to win. Does he, come, does he come to you like, hey, man, keep feeding? You know how they 
Does he come? He wants to eat. He wants to Derek eat. is uh, Derek is a man of few words, but you can tell when he's uh, when he's starting to get into his stride. I'll say that. Are you aware d- during the game that maybe <coughs> third, fourth quarter of how many touches he's had? Uh, at times, you you know you you kind of understand how many uh, how many carries he's had, or you get a chance to see something you know uh, statistically scroll across or, or what have you. But uh, never are we saying, "Hey, he's getting too close to too many carries," or or what have you. We just stay in the flow of the game.